Hey gang, I thought I would try something a little different today. Uh, today I figured I would run you through my Twitch setup so you can get a better idea of how I structure it and, and maybe ways that you could get started as well. So the first thing that I'll tell you is I use a free program called Streamlabs OBS. Doesn't cost any money to download, doesn't cost any money to use, and that's a really good resource and that's how I stream on Twitch, on YouTube, uh, on Facebook Live. That is, you know, there's lots of other programs you can use, but Streamlabs OBS is a really solid one that I highly recommend. Uh, the second thing that I would suggest is having um, at least one webcam as part of your setup. You can stream um, tabletop games digitally on your PC and just talk over the top of them, but I think having a camera makes it more personal. Uh, and it, it feels like you're actually spending some time with a person rather than kind of um, uh, a disconnected voice. That's my personal opinion and, and you know, mileage may vary. Um, another thing that I would say do is um, consider having more than one camera. Consider having, I use the laptop in my computer. I use uh, the, the laptop in my computer, the webcam in my laptop. Um, and that is how I'm getting the, the image of me here in this top corner, hello. And I've also got a camera above pointing down at the game state. Now, for the first six months of streaming, I was using this, which is a Logitech C920 webcam. And that's what I used as my top down camera. I picked it up in the Christmas sales for about 25 pounds. Now what I use is I use my digital SLR camera which is a professional uh, camera, very expensive. So, you know, don't be surprised if the camera you use doesn't quite look this sharp, but you can get the same effects and you can get the same layout and setup using any webcam. I recommend any webcam you purchase, make sure it's at least HD. But the main thing that's important here is lighting. The reason why this looks as crisp and it looks as colorful as it does is because I've got additional lighting to show you the board state. So I'd say, you know, get a lamp, get like a softbox, get anything, or even just put your table next to the daylight window if you, you know, have enough daylight in the room that you stream in, um, because that makes a lot of difference in terms of the quality that any camera gives you. It's the same with photography. The more light you put into an image, the higher the, you know, the contrast ratio is gonna be, the more color, you're gonna get out of it, the more detail you'll get out of any camera you use. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is you can create, even with just a one camera setup, if we ignore me in the top corner here, even with a one camera setup, you can build zooms into that using Streamlabs. So what I do is when I stream a game, is I have a few preset different zooms that I use if I wanna talk about different parts of the game. If I wanna talk about the cards I've been playing, or, if I've collected some of the uh, the doors that I need to win the game, for example, in Honorim, or if there was something else over here on the right-hand side of the game state that I wanted to discuss. By building these scenes, uh, these scenes into Streamlabs, it allows you, just with a click of a button, some people have the little panels they use, but I just use my mouse, that allows you to switch between uh, what people are seeing on the screen, making it more dynamic. Um, the way I've done that is I've duplicated, I've made one scene, then I've duplicated it and just made the image larger within that, within that particular feed. So the difference between board game setup and board game setup zoom is all I've done is I've imagined just made the picture bigger. I've just clicked on the clicked on the, the video feed and just gone boop, and just dragged it wider and then positioned it where I want it duplicated that, dragged it to the side, duplicated that, dragged it to the other side. So I can click between them and it's giving me different zooms just using one camera. Um, another part of my setup now, which is um, the newest, one of the newest additions to my setup is this, the, the Blue Yeti X, which is a, a very expensive um, microphone if you're just getting started. Um, it's an expensive microphone for me, bear in mind that my Twitch feed makes no money. Um, this is, beyond the earnings of my Twitch stream. Uh, I don't think I'll e probably ever pay for this through what I earn via Twitch. However, I I've just used my own personal income towards it. And what any microphone provides you with 
is the ability for people to hear you in a clean way. I've got this microphone on an arm like this. And the reason why it's now on an arm, it never used to be, but the reason why it's now on an arm is so you can position it in a way that it's not disrupting what's going on here. It's not getting in the way of your game state. I used to have my microphone here and I used to have to put everything further away and reach around it. Or I'd put my microphone all the way over here and the sound level will be a bit more echoey because the closer you get to the microphone, the, the closer you are to the microphone, the more quality the microphone sounds. Um, so you want to consider trying to get your microphone placement closer because it will make your microphone sound better. The more the more echoey, the more sound you get into it, the worse your microphone sounds, basically. Um, other than that, what I've done is I've built in um, using Streamlabs, the website Streamlabs, and they created Streamlabs OBS. I have a Twitch chat box, so whenever I'm streaming, people can talk and it'll appear over what it is that I'm playing and then disappear after a certain amount of time. There's also an alert box, so if people um, follow or subscribe, it'll do a little pop-up alert, which you can customize yourself uh, to be whatever it is you want to be. And I'm also capturing the uh, sound from my desktop. So if I play video games, you can hear the video game sound. If I'm just talking or playing a board game, I use a website called Stream, uh, not Streamlabs, um, Pretzel Rocks, which is a royalty free service um, for you to get music to play with Twitch streaming or streaming services um, because uh, streaming services don't allow you to use copyrighted music on your stream um, because it's in breach. It's in breach of royalties. You're not giving them any money or anything like that. So I actually pay a couple of bucks a month for a royalty free service so I can um, so I can use music on my streams. Um, that's something to consider. I wouldn't advise, you know, using um, Spotify or using music off YouTube and things like that just because you're not giving the creatives the, the royalties for whatever it is that you're using and, and try and be, whether you're making money or not, try and be considerate of the people whose work that you're using to, to you know, to improve whatever it is you're doing. Um, anyway, that is a general overview of my setup and my feed. If anyone has any questions, I am super nerdy about all this, so I'm more than happy to talk about it um, because I've spent a lot of hours trying to tinker my setup to make it as good as possible, whether there's two people watching me or more. Um, I figure like whoever stumbles onto my Twitch, at least they'll be able to see what I'm doing in, in clear detail, even if my, presenta my presentation style uh, needs a little bit of work. All right. Thanks, folks. I'll catch you again.